I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Good evening to you. I'm Father Jonathan Rowe. I'm the parish priest at St. Michael's Anglican Church, the church in Kenmount Terrace. It is Tuesday, the 10th of November. We're gathered online to pray the Office of Evening Prayer. And I want to thank you for joining us this evening. I'm going to take a moment to light a candle to symbolize the prayers of the scattered church ascending into heaven. Even if we can't physically gather for worship, you can do the same along with me if you'd like. And when we're ready, the service of evening prayer will begin on page 20 in the Book of Common Prayer. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 78, Part 2, beginning on page 429. Many a time did God's people rebel against him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert. They turned back and tempted God and provoked the Holy One of Israel. They thought not of his hand and of the day when he delivered them from the hand of the enemy. How he had wrought his miracles in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zoan. He turned their rivers into blood so that they could not drink of their streams. He sent among them swarms of flies which devoured them and frogs which destroyed them. He gave their fruit unto the caterpillar, and their labor unto the locust. He destroyed their vines with hailstones, and their sycamore trees with the frost. He smote their cattle also with hailstones, and their flocks with hot thunderbolts. He cast upon them the fury of his wrath, anger, displeasure, and trouble a band of destroying angels. He made a way for his indignation and spared not their soul from death, but gave their life over to the pestilence and smote all the firstborn in Egypt, the firstlings of their strength in the dwellings of Ham. But as for his own people, he led them forth like sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. He brought them out safely that they did not fear, and overwhelmed their enemies in the sea. He brought them unto his holy border, even to the mountain which he had purchased with his right hand. He cast out the nations also before them, caused their land to be divided among them for an heritage, and made the tribes of Israel to dwell in their tents. Yet they tempted and rebelled against the Most High God, and kept not his testimonies, but turned back and fell away like their forefathers, starting aside like a broken bow. For they grieved him with their hill altars, and provoked him to displeasure with their images. When God heard this, he was wroth, and took sore displeasure at Israel, so that he forsook the tabernacle in Shiloh, even the tent that he had pitched among men. He delivered his strength into captivity, and his glory into the enemy's hand. 
he gave his people over also unto the sword, and was wroth with his inheritance. The fire consumed their young men, and their maidens were not given to marriage. Their priests were slain with the sword, and their widows made no lamentation. So the Lord awaked as one out of sleep, and like a giant refreshed with wine. He smote his enemies backward, and put them to a perpetual shame. He refused the tabernacle of Joseph, and chose not the tribe of Ephraim, but chose the tribe of Judah, even the hill of Zion which he loved. And he built his sanctuary like the heights of heaven, and like the earth which he hath founded forever. He chose David also his servant, and took him away from the sheepfolds. As he was following the ewes with their young, he brought him, that he might feed Jacob his people, and Israel his inheritance. So he fed him, fed them with a faithful and true heart, and ruled them prudently with all his power. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is written in the book of the prophet Joel, the first chapter beginning at the 15th verse. Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is near, and as destruction from the Almighty it comes. Is not the food cut off before our eyes, joy and gladness from the house of our God? The seed shrivels under the clods, The storehouses are desolate. The granaries are ruined because the grain has failed. How the beasts groan. The herds of cattle are perplexed because there is no pasture for them. Even the flocks of sheep are dismayed. Unto thee, O Lord, I cry, for fire has devoured the pastures of the wilderness, and flame has burned all the trees of the field. Even the wild beasts cry to thee, because the water brooks are dried up, and fire has devoured the pastures of the wilderness. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness there is spread upon the mountains a great and powerful people. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them through the years of all generations. Here endeth the first lesson. The Office of Evening Prayer continues with the Magnificat on page 21. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is written in the Revelation to St. John the Divine, the 19th chapter, beginning at the first verse. After this, I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude in heaven, crying, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God, for his judgments are true and just. He has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication, and he, is, he has avenged on her the blood of his servants. Once more they cried, Hallelujah! The smoke from her goes up for ever and ever. And the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God, who is seated on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah. And from the throne came a voice crying, Praise our God, all you his servants, you who fear him, small and great. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the sound of many waters and like the sound of mighty thunder peals, crying, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to be clothed with linen, with fine linen, bright and pure, for the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are true words of God. Then I fell down at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brethren who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Here endeth the second lesson. The Office of Evening Prayer continues with the Nunc Dimittis on page 22. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. 
O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and ever more mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Lord, we beseech thee to keep thy household, the Church, in continual godliness, that through thy protection it may be free from all adversities, and devoutly given to serve thee in good works, to the glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Protect and prosper, O Lord, all those who labour at tasks of danger and difficulty, especially all our frontline and essential workers, that they may be preserved in safety and health, and grant that knowing the dangers which beset them, they may ever take thought one for another, and be sustained by a sure trust in thee, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to call to mind at this point some way in the last 24 hours that you have been aware of the presence of God. Where are you seeing God at work in the world these days? And what are you seeing God doing? Give thanks and praise to Almighty God for the gift of that experience and pray for the grace and strength and courage to join in with what God is doing in the world. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Again, thanks for praying with us this evening. I hope that these daily services of morning and evening prayer are a blessing to you. I also hope that they're becoming something of a habit for you, a part of your disciplined, ordered life of prayer. I remind you that we pray the Office of Morning Prayer on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 7 o'clock, and Evening Prayer on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at 4.30. And those are the times that the videos premiere, but you can, of course, tune in on demand at any point later in the day that's convenient for you. Until the next time we gather, be good. God bless and take care of each other. Bye-bye.